Hello everyone, John Grimsmo here. This is a maintenance video of the Tormac. So I've had this bad boy for just over three years now, and I run it pretty hard, pretty often. For the longest time, I was running the Premier Synthetic Coolant that Tormac sells, and I really didn't like it. And if you don't like something, you should really change it instead of let it run for two and a half years and not like it, because that's just stupid. So I recently switched to QualiChem coolant, which is freaking amazing. I've got a video filmed on that. I'm not sure if it's up yet or if this is going up first or whatever, but regardless, the coolant is amazing. So the old coolant made a lot of rust. So running that crappy coolant, and I often let it run too lean, which means it's mostly just water, and water equals rust. I've had a lot of rust on this machine, especially around the spindle nose right here and when you get in real close on those shots with the camera uh, all you see is rust and it looks stupid and I don't like it and a lot of people have commented even Tormac has commented and said well maybe you should get the new spindle and put that on there and just so it looks a little bit better on top of that I've got three years of hard use on this bearing I've crashed it on the spindle bearings I've crashed it a whole bunch of times both down and sideways and all kinds of stuff and they're starting to sound a little funky yet I don't know if they're actually worn out or not but I got the new spindle anyway Ta-da! So I got the complete um, spindle assembly, which is uh, just a drop-in replacement, super easy. I watched a video on the YouTube um, from Christopher Anglin, and he rebuilt his spindle. He didn't buy the new one, he just bought the new bearings for it. But it's a fantastic video that shows how to disassemble the whole thing and uh, put it back in. So the price of the spindle is about $550. The price of the bearings is maybe two or $300. Um, so I just figured it'd be just easier to put the whole spindle in and I want to get rid of the rust so I need the whole spindle. To give you a comparison, Tormac is an awesome entry-level CNC machine that you can fit in your garage or your basement and for not much money. So that spindle was $500. A Haas spindle I've heard around $7,000 and a Moriseki spindle which is top of the line $20,000. So you know, that is a huge thumbs up for these machines, is that replacement parts are cheap, easy, you can put them in yourself, and uh, I'm going to set the timer actually and see how quick I can put this thing in. So without further ado, uh, there's a couple measurements I want to take, and I'll tell you guys about that, because switching the new spindle will change quite a bit of things. Alright, before I pull it out, I'm going to take the collet out. I think I have a brand new collet too, so I'll throw that in just because. I want to measure the run out of the actual spindle, of the old spindle, put the new one in, measure the run out of the new spindle, report on that and I also think that my tool lengths are all gonna change a tiny little bit just because I don't assume I'm not assuming that 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 spindle it's exactly the same height as this spindle you can't assume that so I'm gonna have to reset all my tools big deal whatever but I have a lot of tools to do yeah so let's measure the run out and then I want to set the tool length of one tool so that we can measure it on the new spindle and see how far off it was okay all right here we go Some timer on. Um, this will be actual time to install this. The only thing I've done so far is I've uh, hit this with WD-40 and wiped off all the packing grease that comes on it. There wasn't that much, but it was just a little bit. It cleaned it up a little bit. So I spent five minutes doing that or whatever. Um, so this time we'll be obviously including any filming and narrating and measuring. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to set the tool length so that we know, uh, know how different they are, just for curiosity's sake. And then we're going to measure the run out. Okay, the other thing is, see this little line right there? There we go, yeah, that line. I scratched that in there. Um, that is so that I can always align my probe. Just like that. And always put it with the wires going that way. So that any run out in the spindle is always neutralized by always putting the probe in the same way and always pointing the wire that way. So that the probe is always where I expect it to be. Um. Too bad I didn't have that on camera because that was scary and hilarious. Let me show you. Alright. I did this same exact stupid thing when I taught the Tormac class back in 2013. Um, before I had the tool changer. I'm an idiot. So, the door fell down. 
When you have the door open, it swings on these little pins, and it was open, and then I jog the Z down, and it hits right here, and it falls off, and then bounces, and bounces, and bounces, and bounces, because I'm an idiot, and I can never seem to remember that that happens. Um, so, don't do that. Just take it off. Right now I'm going to loosen the R8 collet. A few months ago, I did replace the uh, four stacks of Belleville washers that were in there because I think two or three of them were just cracked. So I didn't have much drawbar force. So check yours probably once a year or more often and you should be good. I'm going to see if this is the newer one that I have or if it's the old one. And if I have a brand new one. If I have a new one, use it. Alright, got my uh, dial test indicator on a mag base. I'm going to put it up inside the spindle and measure some run out. For those of you that don't have one of these, John Saunders, you're totally missing out. Kind of hard to see the, the needle from this angle, but you get the idea. You can see all the rust on the spindle right there. Pretty gross, but I think we can get the idea here. I do have it preloaded a little bit. And there's off, and there's on a little bit. Um, I'm going to take that off. I'm going to turn the spindle on to very, very low RPM, to the lowest manual setting. Not too bad, actually. It's a bit of a jiggle. So that's definitely not the most high quality dial test indicator in the world. I think I paid $20 for it. But I'm measuring about three tenths of run out. Which is, it's not that bad. We'll see what the new one has. So now it's just a matter of getting the top screws on, or the top nuts that hold on the pulley. I bought a pin wrench from Tormac. Um, you can get these at hardware stores too, I guess. And this lets you unscrew the top nut. So there's a set screw on the side. Put this in there. Comes off very easily. Now before I forget, now would be a good time to put a big cardboard box or something underneath the spindle so when it does start coming out, I don't drop it. Alright, got that off. Easy peasy. And I believe the pulley just pulls right up. Give my just the big green screwdriver. But I might be wrong. So there are six uh, Allen keys, uh, Allen bolts on the bottom. I'm using a 6mm Allen key to get them out. I believe when I first got the mill, and I've heard this among many many different Tormax, is that most of the bolts around are not super duper tight. So I, I tightened them up um, one of the first days that I got it and I'm checking them now and they're still tight so that's good. So I'm having trouble getting the pulley off. I seem to remember it just lifts off, it might be pries off or something. So I'm going to lower the head down till the, the spindle is almost touching the box here and then I already got these loose and it just pops right down and I'm going to lower it down so that I can hammer the um, spindle main spindle out and hopefully the pulley stays up. See if that works. So now you can see the spindle has loosened. There's a bit of a gap there. I can lift it up and down if I want. So now it's resting on the pulley and I'm just going to tap it down and see if I can get that pulley dislodged. Well surprise surprise this is taking longer than I thought it would. I was hoping it would be a 30 minute job. It's been 40 minutes so far. Um, I gotta go inside. Got kid duty. Well, not kid duty, but, you know, 
Gotta be a dad. So I'm just gonna lift this up, pull the spindle out. I've got everything loose. Took a bit of hammering to get the pulley off, but I did, uh, I did get it off. And there's a keyway slot in there, so that, I think that's what the holdup was. But yeah, let's lift this guy up. It's a really good fit, actually, the, the sliding part. Um, really snug fit, I like that. There we go. There is some grease on that to help it slide in, and like I said, it felt like a really nice fit. All right. Well, it's clean on the inside. It's gross on the outside. Okay, that's it for part one. All right, so I've got the new spindle ready to go in right here. Um, I did notice that the old one was oiled around the um, cylinder there, so I'm going to put some oil on it just to keep it greased and kind of lubricated, but also just corrosion something. I took a clean paper towel, wiped out the cylinder bore, and then I took out another clean paper towel and I wiped it out because you want that to be super clean. But yeah, if I put oil on this, it'll transfer to that and it'll be good. I did do a dry fit sliding this up inside. It is a very nice fit. Perfect slip fit, I guess you'd call it. It's not a very heavy item. What you could do is you could jog the Z down to match it, but I think I'm just going to lift it up and put one bolt in, which is probably not the right way to do it. Aiming it is a little tough because it is such a precision fit. Nice. There we go. Doesn't that look so much better? So final assembly was super easy. I still have to tighten these actually. Put the pulley on top. Just a couple little process things like order things. You put you put the spindle in, you realize you don't have the pulley in yet and it doesn't fit. You gotta drop the spindle, put the pulley on, let it go up. Uh, you try to put the belt on, you realize the belt is caught underneath the pulley. You gotta lift the pulley up again, pull the belt over top. Little things like that, not, not a big deal. And they're obvious once you get to them. But So the pulley's on, the top thing is tight. I still have to put the drawbar in, the new collet, and tighten these bolts, and then we're good to go. So I'm gonna measure run out next. All right, it's tight, it's bolted in, belt is on and tensioned nicely. I just turned it on for the first time and I kind of forget how bad the last one sounded, but this sounds beautiful. So I'll start it at low RPM. You can't even hear it. That sounds really fantastic. Yeah, my old one used to howl a little bit. Whine, I guess you'd call it. Um, and you don't realize it because it happens so slowly over time. It just gets a little bit louder and louder. This sounds fantastic. So as I said, the old one had three years on it. Three years is the lifespan, or if I just abused it too much, or what, but all I know is this sounds way better. And what else? So I'm gonna measure the run out, like I said I would. All right, maybe not the best camera angle to see the line move, but that's okay. I see maybe two tenths. It's got a nice, very slow little wiggle to it. Better than the last one. I think the last one was a bit bumpier all over. That might even just be one tenth, actually. One to two, it's hard to tell. This is a very cheap, uh, cheap indicator. One to two, I'd say. Not bad. Last thing, put the drawbar back in. Get the cylinder back up there. Easy peasy. Yeah, put a collet back in, find the new one, and then measure the Z and see how different it is. Then again, it's not totally accurate because I have, it's the next day and I've reset the mill already, so within a few tenths, it won't measure the way it's supposed to. If I had left the, the mill on the whole time, between pulling the spindle out and putting the new one in, then it's an accurate test. Now it's not gonna be a super accurate test. It should be close though, it's usually within a few tenths. Let's do that. All right, so I do indeed have a new collet from Tormac. Um, 
the old one might still be fine, but if I'm putting in a brand new spindle, why wouldn't I put in a brand new collet? That would be silly. Make sure my hands are fairly clean so I don't get chips all over it. Uh, here's how I tighten the drawbar nut, or bolt. I put a crescent wrench on the spindle, and then this one on the drawbar bolt. And I just tighten it a quarter turn at a time. And you do find a sweet spot. I like my sweet spot to be when I hit the pedal to open the um, collet. I want the tool to just fall right out and have the teeniest, tiniest bit of wiggle, which tells me it's loose. Right now it has a lot of wiggle and it falls out really easily, so I gotta go tighter. Let's try that. Better. Because with the tool changer, you don't want it too tight. Um, otherwise, it won't disengage the tool when the ATC kicks in. Let's try that. That might be it. See, that's too tight. I did one quarter turn and it's too tight. Alright, I think we're good. You can see what I mean about the door right here. If it's right here and you jog the Z down, then it just gets down to here, and then the door lifts up and falls off and crash, crash, crash. And now the door is bent. Oh, it fit so perfect before. Ah well, good enough for now. Yeah, so that's done. So that took me about uh, an hour 35, I think, in total, including filming and measuring for runout, and um, not too bad. Hour and a half to replace a spindle, that's not too bad at all. I want to listen to it actually when it's all buttoned up with the panel on. That sounds so good! Wow, that sounds so much better than before. I can actually hear the fan from the motor on top. Like, I can hear that specifically over the bearing noise and all that stuff. There's no bearing noise. A bit of hum. That's awesome! I'm really happy about that. That was definitely worth um, $550. Now I have a non-rusty spindle, which looks really good. I have new bearings, sounds awesome. It has a little bit better run out, probably. And only took an hour and a half. That's pretty awesome. I do love the thing about these Tormax is that replacement parts are cheap and available and easily installed by yourself. Like everything from ball screws to motors to uh, access motors to everything. So I mean they truly are a personal CNC. You can afford it and you can do it all yourself in your garage. It's pretty awesome. Well, it is time to quit for the day and tomorrow I will be running handles. Yes. Okay. That's it for this episode of maintenance, Tormac maintenance. Uh, thanks for watching. See ya. Bye. Okay, one more quick thing. I did um, check the height of this tool on my tool setter, and it is 30 thousandths off from where it was last time. So the new spindle is 30 thousandths longer than the old one. So all your tool offsets are going to be different. Just plan for that. I have over 50 tool holders, and they're all set, so I have to reset them all. Whatever, big deal. It's worth it though, because those bearings sound quiet and nice.